Hey y'all, welcome back. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining the channel. Hope you're all well. Uh, today on the bench I got a nice example of an Akai AM2800 integrated amp. It's a fairly heavy beast. It's fairly big too. Um, it's in black. It's nice. Uh, it's actually a really nice uh, amplifier. I was listening to it for a couple days before I put it on the bench just to get a baseline of what I'm dealing with here and Get a good idea what's wrong with it. it. Has a few problems. We'll go over that in a minute. Um, yeah, it's a it's a splendid looking amplifier. It's got meters and everything. Let's have a good close look at it. Starting out on the left, we have power button, chunk power button, with power light right above it. We have a speaker selector switch from off A, B, and A plus B. This is a silver aluminum knob. Uh, I think somebody put that on there. I see. I'm gonna dig through and see if I can find a black. A black knob that's more suiting. Phono output, dual power meters, and they have two ranges uh, 3 watts full range or 100 watts full range, depending on which way you lever that switch. Uh, two choices of audio mute, which is minus 15 dBs or 30 dBs minus. Uh, tone control switch, turns your tone controls on and off. And then you have three, three tone controls bass, mid, and treble and uh, get a nice feel to them. Up here we got a mode switch, mono, stereo, and reverse stereo. And then we have two, a selection of two choices for loudness. One is uh, low, low frequencies, and then you have low and high frequencies. On this side we have some filters. You got a low filter, uh, 30 hertz. You got a choice of 30 hertz or 60 hertz. And then you have a high filter choice of 7 kilohertz or 10 kilohertz, which is kind of pretty good. Uh, master volume control with a coaxial balance. And then we have an input selector with two phono inputs, a tuner auxiliary, and two tape loops run through this switch here and dubbing for both. It's kind of pretty good. Let's have a look at the back. All right, so carrying on the back, we have our Inputs, auxiliary, tuner, phono 2, phono 1. And for phono 2, we are able to select the input impedance. Look at this. So we have 33K, 47K, and 100K. If that makes a difference to some people. DIN input for our uh, tape 1 loop. We have our tape 1 loop here, tape 2. Um, that's pretty much it for inputs. I was kind of disappointed not to see a, a breakout for the preamplifier or power amplifier, but that's fine. And then we have two outputs for speakers. And if I swing the camera around a little bit, you can see we've got three courtesy outlets. So nicely optioned amplifier. It does have a wooden top and sides. You can see here it's, it's made from plywood that's got a black vinyl wrap on it. Kind of, I like, kind of like that. It um, gives it a nice look. I don't know. Anyways, let's have a look inside. Okay, let's have our first look inside. Like I said, it's nice plywood cover. So it does look all original. I don't see anything that's been hacked at or worked on. Looks all good. Now, I did say that there were some problems with this, and um, one of the problems I believe is the output relay, the protection relay. I have a feeling it's going weak because you'd be listening to it and then all of a sudden one of your channels would drop in volume. And uh, playing with all the knobs and switches in the front doesn't re really seem to rectify that. It just kind of, it's it just drops. Uh, another problem this thing has is the power switch is kaput. Because sometimes when you turn it on you can hear it arcing inside and uh, that's really a bad situation to be in. Power switch is arcing. Can you hear it? not coming up. There we go. Yeah, 
bad power switch. Uh, that's why I only listened to this maybe for a couple days because once the power switch started acting up, I uh, pulled the plug on it and started uh, took it out of service because uh, I'm not going to have a chance of a fire breaking out. So first thing we'll do is change that power switch. Um, it's got our outputs left and right channels. Everything looks really beefy and capable. I don't see any spills on the on the boards. Everything looks good. And as far as the other controls, I tried out a lot of different uh, the settings and knobs, and it seems like everything was working. It's just the usual uh, dirty pots and switches. We need to clean some of that stuff to get it back up. But um, other than that, everything's looking pretty good. So we'll see. I don't know if we're going to find any bad caps in here. I have a feeling we might find a few. Might be a good idea to recap the amplifier boards and tone boards under here there's a tone board might be a good idea we'll have to check all those capacitors see if they're doing good or not but um, this thing might uh, benefit from a recap it did sound pretty good when i listened to it um, it wasn't one of the best amplifiers i've ever heard but it did have a good clean sound and uh, yeah i think we'll see how, how it does with the recap on uh, some circuits all right, let's remove the bottom and have a look inside. I believe I got them all. Okay. Looking pretty good. Yeah, everything looks untouched. I don't think this thing's ever been serviced. So yeah, looks good. Here's our power switch. Get that replaced. Everything looks original and intact. It's good. All right, so here's the original power switch. I removed it. And uh, this is the intended replacement this is a brand new uh, power switch. This is rated at 5 amps at 125 volts. This will be more than adequate for what we need. Um, physically, pretty much identical. You can see the, the plungers, this pretty much the same length. Uh, we do have a problem though. This button has a different style of uh, push on, but we can just. Uh, put it at a 45 degree angle and push it on and it'll stay so we'll go with that but let's have a look inside here I like these power switches fail in the arc inside and then uh, see how bad this one's gotten because uh, it did sound pretty bad and uh, when I tested it and I think I had a little bit uh, put a little video there for you okay here we go this is not looking good so far so we can see this part here is getting uh, blasted with plasma. And right here, this switch is, is done. Can't really see the contacts, but there's not much left of it. It looks like the contact, the bottom contact's gone, and it's just relying on the copper strip now. Bend this up. We're not using this in again, so I'm going to bend this up. Show you just how bad this is. See how badly pitted and arced out it is. Yeah, that's that's re you got to replace that. There's no cleaning contacts when they're this bad. It's just uh, you're asking for trouble. So, like I said, we'll put one of these in, and we'll put a new x1 class safety capacitor and that goes across the contacts and then we'll put that mount that in okay we've got the relay out this is what the part number is ms4u it's 24 volt relay it's um, dual contacts somebody's been in here before because the case is cracked 
and it no longer snaps on. Gold contacts, and there's a pair of gold contacts for each set, of each uh, left and right. And thankfully, nobody's gone in here and uh, used a heavy abrasive on this. And they, and they might have done some cleaning, but it doesn't look like anything's been damaged, which is a good, good sign. But have a look at this. You see those gold contacts, how when it, when it closes, see how the bottom, they don't align, they're way out. And if you look with a magnifier, you can see there's a wear pattern on the contacts from where they touch. And that's normal. You get that over time. But what I propose to do is I propose to realign these contacts and you know, push them back this way so that they line up better. And, and how to do that, I'm going to do that right here. Let's go back a little bit. On the back of the armature, I'm just going to bend it out a bit. It's going to give it a little bit of a nudge on that side. A little bit of a nudge on this side as well. It's a little too far, but I can bend it back. Let me bend it back a bit. Oops, not too far there. I really messed it up. Okay, so let's have a look at this now. See how those contacts align a lot better now? And what they're actually doing is they have fresh area to contact with that is, uh, it's never been used before. So the plating, the gold plating is good. And I'm assuming everything's good. I'm gonna measure the contacts on this. And I'll give it a cleaning as well with some contact cleaner. This is zero residue. You gotta put lots on and then work fast because the stuff evaporates fairly quickly. Close the contacts and drag. And we got a little bit of dirt out of there. Okay, I'm gonna check the contact resistance and then we'll put it back together. All right, just a bit more of what I'm finding here. Um, kind of testing these caps here, these black ones, they seem to be fine. I uh, haven't tested them all yet, but I'm gonna go through and test every one of them. These blue ones, these blue Sanyo caps, as soon as I see these, I change them. I don't even bother testing them because I know they're bad. Um, very rarely do they hold up this long. Um, and these are usually low microfarad, like this one's 0.47. So that can get replaced with a film cap. Take out the electrolytic and replace it with a film cap. And then on the tone board, there's a whole bunch of them in here. Small value, micro, uh, all, um, small value electrolytics. And I just replace them with uh, film. Same with these yellow ones. These are an audio grade cap. Usually by this time they are done. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna test all these. And in the end I'll have a, um, a good idea of, or you'll have a good idea of what I've changed and what, what it took. So same thing back up here. If I go to this phono amplifier, same thing. There's audio grade caps here. There's four of them. And then there's four regular caps. So I'll go through and check all those. Um, but aside from that, everything's looking good so far. All right, it's the next day, and I spent about uh, three, four hours yesterday going over this, focusing on capacitors, and I'll give you an explanation of what I did here. Um, the main power board and amplifier board, I replaced probably maybe 40% of the caps on here. A lot of these tested fine, these black ones, so I just left them alone. Um, a lot of the smaller ones, not so much fine, so they got replaced. A uh, few here that I replaced, like a 0.47 electrolytic, I put in a film cap, and then I re replaced a few down here that you know that were weak. But for the most part, the caps on this board were fine. 
Now the tone board though was a different story. This is a preamp board, tone board in here. And uh, I replaced probably 90% of the caps, except well, I could, all of them except for two. Two caps tested fine, so I left them alone. All the other ones were replaced. Um, had a lot of low value electrolytics I replaced with film caps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. And then um, there's some small value electrolytics that got replaced as well with uh, either audio grade or regular grade depending on their application. So this board has all been pretty much recapped. And then, and then that leaves, the only thing left with caps on this thing is the phono board. And again, I replaced all the defective caps. There was uh, two, four, six defective caps and two good caps. But I replaced the good caps just because this board is difficult to get to. And it's really quite a chore to get it apart. You have to remove the back panel and pull it back so you have access to pull the board out. And it's a little bit involved. You've got to remove a lot of connectors and, and screws. So I opted just replace those two while I have the board out. Everything else checks out fine. Now, um, as far as today goes, it's probably just going to be switches and pots. A lot of cleaning switches and pots. I got access to all these boards now. Um, got access to this and up in here. There's another switch down in here. That's the tape dubbing switch. And I got access to everything. I'm just going to do pots and switches today. Reassembly. Um, Transistors. There are a few of these transistors that are on my naughty list. This one here, for example, this is a 2SC1312. Okay, and that's on my naughty list. But this one does not have the silver legs that is, uh, that is, you know, known as for the silver migration. So the, these, I'm going to leave these transistors alone unless they present a problem when I test. I only have one transistor here that I can spot that has silver migration on the legs and it's this one here and it's a B560 and I don't know what that does. that's in the power supply though I might just take that transistor out and maybe um, upgrade it to something more modern and maybe if it's a reg pass regulator I can put something else in there like a TO220 package transistor it's a PMP I don't know yeah I'll, I'll get on that yet everything else looks good um, crack solders I haven't found any and uh, I've been looking but none have been there are none that I can see switches and pots everything's good no cracks on any of the joints this thing was really well built um, yeah for for what it is it was really well built so again switches and pots today I'm gonna go over and fine-tune everything probably clean boards I have to clean the backs of these boards after I've done all the soldering and we'll get it back together. Okay, let's have a look at this transistor. I just desoldered it and pull it out. I'll show you the silver migration on the legs. Right here. This one looks pretty, pretty intense. Okay. So here it is. This is a 2SB560. And you can see I don't know if you can see the middle in the middle there. No, no, see, now it's going to quite a focus. You can see that in the center there, the three legs are not very far apart from each other. And uh, silver migration can bridge over and cause a short. Now, if this transistor is in a power circuit, probably what will happen is that will flash over and clear itself. But if this is in like in a low current uh, circuit, it won't have a chance to do that. It will probably just short out and cease to function. So, can we clean that off? Let's just give it a wipe. Doesn't want to. You can clean that off. While I got this apart, I'm going to take the opportunity to check these output devices. And yeah, this is not even tight. None of these are tight. So I'm going to pull these transistors out, regoop them, clean them, and regoop them, and then uh, put 
put it all back together. I don't see any. I don't see any paste on these unless it's the transparent kind, the translucent kind. But let's just pull one out here and have a look at it. It's kind of disappointed how loose these were. And that's a good way to blow up your outputs is to have them loose like that. Let me see if I can pull this out. Look at that, they're completely, completely dry. Well, there is that translucent paste on here, but there's just not enough of it. There's really nothing on it. So I bought some new stuff from uh, DigiKey. This is gray paste, it's a thermal compound. Um, I just wanted to give it a try. It sent me a little tub of it and it's only like one quarter full. It's fairly heavy. I wonder if this is silver. I should look at the data sheet first before I start using it. But uh, yeah, it's quite heavy. Maybe it is silver paste. But we're going to get this fixed up. Okay, I am ready to do a power test. But first, I want to do the uh, amplifier setup and the adjustments that way. So let's find a screwdriver. I think I had one here. It's right here. Now, the service manual says uh, connect a voltmeter to pin 11 and 12 for left channel. 11 and 12 is right here. It's not marked on the board, but you have to look at the schematic or the, the pictorial diagram of the board in, this, in the service manual to see which pin is 11 and 12. And we're looking for 30 millivolts between the two because we're measuring across both emitter resistors. Uh, and then adjust VR4 for the left channel, VR4B for the right channel. So we'll get to that. I'll just turn this on. Here's our power consumption. Jumps up to about 80 watts and then settles back down around 20. Okay. And we have less than one millivolt here. Is that a defect in the amplifier or is that something bad? Let's try adjusting this. We're looking for 30. Just keep going until we hit 30. Okay, I'm going to let it put it a little low because it's going to warm up. And as it warms up, it's going to either climb or drop. I think it's going to drop. No. The amplifier is co dead cold right now. So let's uh, go to the other channel and set that one up. If I can see the pins here. It's not the most convenient thing there. Okay, so this one is low too. Let's turn this one up. Set it up to 30. Now I'm gonna let this idle like this for about 15 minutes and then I'll come back and tweak it one more time. Here's a look at the output voltage. Uh, let's see here. Let's turn on speakers B. So I have nothing connected to speakers B. So let's check the left channel. And we have it bobbing up and down between 0 and 12 millivolts. Other channel. It's hanging out around 0 to 7. So it's pretty normal. Okay, like I said, I'm going to let this idle for about 15 minutes. Come back and we're going to readjust this so it's down to 30 again. Okay, so we got both channels adjusted uh, bias and our idle current or consumption is around 20, 26 watts, which is fairly normal. I uh, wouldn't want to see it any higher. 
but that's pretty good. I'm not complaining about that. All right, so on to uh, next is uh, set up the power meters, and that involves adding a signal, um, 4.9 volts RMS, and then we set this for three volt or three sorry three watts on the meter using our switch and uh, the adjustments here in the back. All right, so I'm feeding a thousand hertz tone. And I have a load, 8 ohm load hooked up to channel A. And I have on my voltmeter here, I can actually turn this down a little bit because it is just a touch high. Let's go with amplitude. And turn this down till it's exactly 4.9. Okay, so what does our meter say? Our meter says it's about two and a bit. So I'm just gonna crank it up a bit just so it reads three. It's kind of hard to do with the angle I'm looking. So let me stick my head in the way. There we go, it's at three. And this one's a little low too. So let's do this one as well. my voltmeter up to the other channel. Okay, I got both power meters adjusted properly. Uh, there is a little bit of a misbalance on the uh, amplifiers. My balance control is sitting at about 5.5. If I turn it, I wonder if it is... Yeah, you can see on the meters, uh, right, the left channel is a little stronger. I don't know if that's a function of the, well, it's not the meters because these are calibrated now. It has to be something within the amplifier. Okay, let's go move on to our power tests. All right, we're all wired in for a power test, eight ohm load, uh, 1000 Hertz tone, and my RMS voltmeter is on. So let's turn this up. Now I noticed in the previous segment, I noticed that one amplifier has more gain than the other. I don't know if that is a fault or if that is something to do with maybe an imbalance in the pots. So let's turn this up. And this the amplifier is rated at 80 watts per channel. And I kind of believe it. Look at the size of this power transformer. It's like a, it's like a big football at the back here. It's huge, huge transformer. So let's see what we can get out of this thing. The left channel on the top is clipping already long before the right channel on the bottom clips. So let's take this back a bit. Right about there. And I am reading 28.94 volts RMS. And we are consuming 337 watts from the outlet. So let this go for a while and see how it goes. Little drivers are getting warm. But I'll let this go for a while and we'll see how it works out. What do we have for meters? Yeah, we're reading. We're still reading low on this right channel. Let's see if I superimpose one on the other. And see the difference. Okay, I'm gonna shut this down. I don't wanna cook it too long. Um, let's investigate what's going on here. I have the on the inputs here on the amplifier, I got pink and yellow. I think I'm going to do a measurement here on the input of this amplifier, see if we're getting equal uh, amplitude on our signal. 
and that'll tell us if the problem is in the power amplifier or on the tone board because you know, we did a lot of work on both but I'm going to play around with some controls here and see if I can figure out if uh, there's any reason for this okay it appears I got a problem in the tone circuit because I'll show you um, I have the tone controls off right now when I turn them on watch the right meter it drops quite a bit okay and we're getting attenuation in the right channel now watch what happens when I turn up the treble at 15 kilohertz remember we're getting no boost on our right channel at all oh there it goes I've got a bad pot here what is going on yeah we got a bad pot okay so I'm back a few minutes later I did figure out the problem with the treble control it was a bad solder connection on my part I had that pot out and when I put it back in I soldered it and from the angle I was looking at it looked fine but if you looked at it from a different angle it uh, was definitely not connected so anyways uh, let's determine where our um, imbalance is coming from so I got it connected this to the left channel input of the power amplifier I got no load no speakers shut the speakers off because we don't need that so let's turn this on I got a thousand Hertz tone going in let's turn this on and as you can see on the output of the preamplifier section here I got 1.05 volts now let's go check the right channel and that is right over here ah there you go 0.96 so that right channel is weak coming out of the preamp fire tone board so we're going to focus my efforts on okay so how do we troubleshoot a imbalance between two different channels um, well it's just easy pretty easy actually you you just go along and you measure points along the chain between the right and left and you keep going until you find a point where there's a difference uh, right at the beginning here we have our mode switch and I was playing with the mode switch the mono stereo reverse mo uh, stereo and I noticed when I flipped the switch up and down between stereo and reverse the um, the imbalance didn't change at all so it has to be after that mode switch and the mode switch being right here at the beginning of the circuit and then there's a balance potentiometer and then there's a loudness potentiometer and then it jumps off this board and goes on to the next board so we can test this board the volume control board for if there's any imbalance on this and if it does it suggests the pots are bad so we can go do that now now the signal comes in I believe uh, let's see here here is this is where a schematic really helps the signal comes in on pin 4 and 6 and leaves and pin 1 and 3 okay that's all there is to connect it to this board of six wires and you can see them here so let's connect our ground connection to the ground here and let's connect this to one channel I don't know which one it is I'm feeding in at a thousand Hertz tone and I got it at one point well let's turn it up let's turn this up okay so you can see right here here's our tone the amplifier is actually turned off right now so we can check between this channel is 0.635 and this channel 0.635 so that's a balance there balance control centered and the volume pot turned to around one or two o'clock so let's try it here on the output I got one four three try it on the other channel ah one five eight okay there's our difference we didn't have to look very far so it's in this potentiometer it seems to be tracking a lot better uh, let's see here and it seems to be a little more balanced so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this one here I'm going to take this put it on my listening bench listen to it for a few weeks I'm going to see how it sounds I did 
check a lot of parts in the, on the tone boards. Very difficult, actually no, it's very easy to service this receiver or amplifier. Very difficult to work with the, the service literature. None of the boards are silk screened with part numbers. Capacitors aren't marked for polarity. Transistors aren't marked for orientation. It is an easy machine to work on. You got full access, uh, easy, the power amplifier can come out easy. Uh, the boards remove easy. You got access on both sides. So it's joy that way, but it's pain the other way. So like I said, I'm gonna shut this off here. Uh, listen to it, see how it sounds, see how it behaves, and, uh, and if all's good, it's going to go back to the owner. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.